The mission on which I am now embarking is vital to the nation. I am going abroad to seek ships or immigrants. If we have no ships, we shall get no immigrants. And without immigration, the future of the Australia we know will be both uneasy and brief. When we were offered passage to Australia as uh, displaced people in Europe, uh, my father had to agree to work for the, uh, for the Australian government uh, in exchange for passage. Once we came to the camp, my mother and I were in the camp, and my father did other jobs at first, but ultimately he also was given a job in Wodonga to manage a pumping station on the Murray River. He actually bought a, a truck, started a business hauling lumber from the New South Wales to Melbourne. That was his business, and he had a truck which he occasionally brought to the camp. He made enough money doing that, and my mother working as uh, assistant to the supervisor, that by 1953 we had enough money to buy a house in Melbourne where we moved in 1953. It's a definitive part of my life. Uh, it reminds me that at one point in time I lived by the time I was 10, I had lived on three continents, including Australia, and um, by the time I was 11. The uncertainty of the war and the post-war period meant I had no idea what was going to happen to my life. As a result of the camp, we were able to stabilize a life, and I'm very happy with my life, and I don't know what would have happened had the camp not given us a break and a chance to rebuild our lives. My name is Sophia Golonski. I was a Golonski, but I'm now called Sophie because I think it's a lot easier to pronounce, especially when I was at school. But my family still calls me so Sophia. And we came from Germany, but my parents were Polish. was 13, my father was 15 during the war, taken to Germany to work in Germany. My mother worked on a farm and my father worked at an ammunition factory. And then after the war finished, they were put into displaced persons camp and that's where they met and got married and had me and then my brother and decided to come to Australia because they didn't think it was worth going back to Poland because it was under communist rule and that's why we came to Australia and start the new chapter in their life. We came to Australia in 1950 and we went straight to Bonagilla and from Bonagilla we were transferred to Uruguinti, which is near Wagga Wagga. Well, I was only very small, so I can't really remember much of Uruguinti, but that's where my brother got polio. Naturally, they took him to Melbourne. He would have gone to the Children's Hospital in Melbourne. So that's why we got transferred to Benalla because it was on the main railway line and she could get to Melbourne to see what was going on because she really didn't know what polio was or what it was all about, yeah. So it was a really stressful time for her. But when she was younger, I suppose as a mother with young children and your husband not there, different country, different language, I think it does make you a bit stronger especially after sort of going through the war and then coming to a strange country and starting all over again. They were really gutsy. They definitely were. I think they had to be. I, didn't think, I don't think they had a choice. 
I can remember when we came to Benalla that we were in these little rooms and a lot of them weren't lined and I can remember my mother saying, because my father wasn't here, that she'd lay in bed at night time and you could see the mice and the rats running on the, on the bearers and that. My name's Regina Sidorchuk, and in, uh, in Greta, I was born in Greta, left in 1960 for Benalla, and I stayed there till 1967 when it closed. So virtually 15 years of my life in the migrant camp. I do know that in, in the late 1950s, there were closing, they're going to close the Greater Camp. Now, uh, I'll, they were trying to get rid of all the people out of there, and there's a lot of women that were there still with their children, young kids. They had no men in their lives, so just left, you know, abandoned virtually, a lot of them. And Mum was offered a job in South Australia, and which she was going to take. She was on the list to go in 1957 or 58, around that time, till a letter came back stating that for her to get a job in Adelaide and accommodation, they couldn't accommodate the three children she had. So they would have put us in St Stanislav Orphanage in Adelaide. When Mum found out that that was going to happen, she refused to go. And apparently she caused a bit of a stir at the time because it was unheard of knocking back something like that. And well, mum, mum made a statement, there's, we are, there's a lot of us in the same boat, that if we go, we all go together. She lost a boy in Germany, and I think that part of it, she would not let us go anywhere without her, to lose a child, and then for them to want to take your other children off you is something she didn't want to do, and she didn't. I will say my proper name, Leszek Jakubowski and I came to the migrant camp in 1951. I'm Stanislaw Vladislav Joseph Nijvetsky and I arrived in Benalla migrant camp in 1951. And what well, I left That's my migrant camp in 1959. For me it was mostly good times. I mean, everybody has a few bad times here and there, but yeah. mainly it was good, a happy environment here. We saw, a, like one big family we were here, yeah. actually. We That's, knew each other yeah. very, very well. We all grew up from four years of age till 16 or 17 mm. before we started to part ways. So we, we really mostly had a happy time here. We grew up with that. We, we, it was right from when we were four years old. There was all different nationalities here. That's so you just, you didn't even think that way. You know, your mind didn't go that way. That, oh, hang on, he's Hungarian, he's this, he's that. You didn't think that way. You just knew there were other children here. You played with them. They played with you, you played with them. And because we grew up through that, even as we got older, even though we knew, oh, he's German, he's Hungarian, he's this, it didn't matter. Mm. You know, and that's how it was, yeah. Yeah, it's very true too. And you got friends for the rest of your life there, and they were very good ones. And the funny thing is, even though we don't see each other for a long time, mm. when we get back together, it's like we never parted. Yeah. It's just amazing, <laughs> yeah, crazy. But I think that's the same for most people, that sort of thing. You know, you grow up with people all those years. I think you, when you see each other again, you're like, wang. You start to reminisce and you talk about the old days and that. Yeah, so it's good fun. Most of our parents kept very quiet about what happened in the past to them, like through the war years and things like that. They wanted to talk more about what was happening now. They, they didn't want to talk about what was happening. But my mother worked here in the kitchen for quite a few years. And uh, finally, when we got out of this, out of the migrant centre, well, I got out earlier than my mother, but when she finally got out of here, when she did say anything to me about Benalla, it was not good. She didn't like it here at all. She was glad to get out of here, so yeah. But I've seen her have happy times here too, so you know, she can't say that it was all bad. 
but she just didn't like the whole environment of a migrant centre. To her, it was more like a, well, Holding not a concentration camp, but sort of along those lines. She, had, she felt like she was enclosed in here, couldn't do anything. So she was very glad to get out of here, yeah. I'm a Brunner and we came to Australia in 1954 on the ship, um, the, yeah, it's a, such a long name, Johan van Olden Barneyfeld. <laughs> and, um, it was the last um, ship to go through the Suez Canal. Mum always thought that was really sort of important. We arrived at Bonnegilla, it was my father, my sister and mum was three months pregnant, then sent to Benalla probably in the March, April of 55. And my brother was born in June of that year. Arriving in Australia, mum said, this will be like England, you know, because she had been to England just after the war. And um, we got on the train and it was all desolate, like brown and no green trees. And she said, this isn't anything like England at all. And, so, and of course it was hot and, but I don't know, they, um, that was a bit of a shock, but they got used to it. My parents didn't actually come out as refugees. They came out on a two year labour contract. And mum always said they pay, took three quarters of dad's wage. And um, at the end of our stay at the camp, she was having to pay back money to the government for two years to make up the shortfall. For, that would have been for um, accommodation costs, etc. When we came, Dad was sent to Mildura, fruit picking, then to Tasmania, also fruit picking. And that was sort of for a year. And then he got a job at the, um, as a wool classer in Gilly Street. So then he was around a bit more for that last year in the camp. I didn't have a sense of being German until I went to school outside of the camp. And that's when we um, had the names thrown at us for being German. Like at the camp, I don't ever remember anyone sort of calling us names or that there was a prejudice. We all sort of got on together. But at school, at the state school and then at the Catholic school later on, there was a lot of prejudice. And for years afterwards, I would never tell anybody my surname because I didn't want them to know I was German. My name's Oleg Mitrakovic. We came to the Benalaga migrant camp from Bonagila. Things I remember mainly is we came and the uh, first thing I had to do was, or wanted to do, was enrol in the school in here because I needed the education. I learned other languages and uh, my English wasn't exactly too good. And then of course mum, uh, mum was very bright and she was very friendly and, and she was smart, she was a good looking young woman so she had a lot, pretty popular and as far as work was concerned, she, it, because she was multilingual, there was a she had a lot of potential with the camp itself and the, the camp director saw her potential at that time and they asked her if she would be a, uh, an interpreter at the hospital for them because the, a lot of people were multilingual but not as far as what mum was so she could cover all of them instead of just one or two and uh, and so she worked there for quite a while and she'd do a little bit of work with the doctors and so on. Uh, then mum went to a lot of Khalil and she worked there again. Mum being a, a really good seamstress from her younger days, she fitted in really well and she picked the business up really quickly. And so she stayed there for quite a long time. She could all, almost operate any machine that was in there, which was a bonus again. And so she stayed there until 1957, I think. And then we had some more Migrants came in, new migrants came in from Europe, and mostly Yugoslavs. The same thing happened. They asked mum if she'd come in and help them in the crash, or kinder, crash, crash kindergarten combination uh, because she spoke good Yugoslav, and, and, and so she came back to do that. And then after a while, 
we don't really talk about it a lot because it, it, I don't know how it was hidden away, but I, I had another brother, a younger brother, and, and who was born here, and uh, and uh, he, he died of cot death before he was 12 months old. Uh, and I remember that, and he's in, in Benalla there, not too far away from mum now. But um, it was after that time when he'd, when he'd passed away, I couldn't affect, I couldn't understand how. He, well, I couldn't uh, work out why Mum had changed so much. At my age, I just didn't know what was going on, really. And, well, Bob even knew less about it than what I did. But from there on, she was a different person. She, um, well, she was still friendly and everything else, but you could see the. The spark just disappeared. Anyway, it took a lot of years and then uh, I don't think Mum ever got over it. I thought, I thought she might have, but I don't think she ever did. I was born in Germany. My name is Helen Veronica Topol. When we arrived in Australia, there were only four of us, my mother and father my older brother and me, but by the time we came to Benalla, when I was 10 years old, my sister was also there. She was born in Australia. The camp, for me at least, was a, a bit of a mixed bag. Um, by and large, it was a happy place because I was a child uh, from 10 to 16 and a half living here. I actually liked school, so I really enjoyed school, but I also really enjoyed playing with my friends around the camp, around the area surrounding the camp. Most of the kids, I think I'm right in saying, not just me, but my friends, my peers, would have really benefited from that kind of routine that was imposed on us. I can't imagine our parents enjoyed that all that much, but they had their work, and they knew what was expected of them and whether they liked it or not, it would have given them a sense of security and safety. That's why when the camp, there was talk about the camp closing, that really upset many of the women, my mother in particular. She even discussed that with me, you know, which she didn't usually discuss private matters with me, but the women of her um, cohort in the kitchen, they were extremely worried because their life was here. Their safety and security was here, and so the outside world then posed a huge threat because they would have to start again. My name is Selena Swist. Um, I was born in Rushworth in the Migrant Centre, and my parents came to Benalla when I was about three or four months old in 1951. And I grew up here until 1956 when we left the camp and we moved into the town. My name is Stephanie Swist. I was born when my parents were already established in the town of Benalla and that's where they lived. I was there with my mum and dad, my four older sisters and one younger brother. The Polish ladies used to teach us young girls to dance and the boys. I had the pleasure of always being a boy. Yeah, dressed in the boys' costumes. I think I did have once or twice with the girls, but I was mainly the boy. And we danced all the Cossacks and the, the surrounding circles and things yeah. like that. All of us were very proud of our dancing. Uh, the way we were taught by just an, an ordinary mum. Uh, our costumes were made by our parents. All the mums used to do them. All by hand because there were no sewing machines at that stage. Uh, we had all the lovely uh, coloured ribbons and the sequins that were put on, on our outfits and yes, we were very proud of it. It allowed us to make friends with other mm -hmm. migrant families mm -hmm. around and we were able to realise that we weren't so different because we were different to the Australian kids here at school, but when we got together with other migrant kids, mm. we saw the similarities. We saw that there were the same values in speaking the language, eating the food, 
having that uh, celebration of, <coughs> of name days of the 3rd of May, Polish Independence Day. Coming to Australia certainly was a new beginning and it wasn't until my parents went back to Germany years later that they appreciated what the beginning was. Although they didn't enjoy the experience, but they realised that it was a far better choice than staying in Germany at the time. I am surprised how many people are really interested in it. So it just goes to show you that they've all got the same feeling. This is where they started their new life. You know, where their parents tried to start their new life. So I can understand that because you do have that little bond. Yes, even though there's not much left of the migrant camp, you still do have that little bond to it, yes. Because I mean, we had lots and lots of good times at the migrant camp, really did, you know. As kids, you do. Our parents probably did too, even though they did it a lot tougher and it was hard for them. But I, I still think they had lots of good times. They had cabarets and different things. So I think they still had good times, yes. Good memories and bad memories, yes.